Okay, today we'll make a beer of tacos. This is a dish from the state of Jalisco, Mexico. The Spanish name birria is used to describe immaterial things without value or quality. It is a traditional ancestral soup, so we want to make our Mexican ancestors super happy. So it's a soup that is made with a combination of pepper-based goat pepper meat and a bunch of other stuff, but we're going to make it our way today. We're going to make some street tacos out of it. But we're not using goats because we don't want to upset the goat ancestors, right? So we're going to make these tacos our way. Today we're going to make them in an Instant Pot and then we're going to put them in a slow cooker to make them super juicy and yummy. So we'll see how they look after they're made. It takes a few hours of time. Putting them in a slow cooker helps to break down the meat and make them super soft. Okay. All right, if this is the first time watching my videos or channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and bell notification. If there's anything you'd like to see me make in the future on this channel, please comment below and please don't forget to share and like. Not only are we making chicken tacos, but we're making beef tacos. We're going to try them both out and see which one's the best. The next step is we're going to prepare our meat. We're doing half chicken, half tri-tip, and typically we do about three pounds. So I'm doing about a pound and a half chicken, pound and a half tri-tip. So let's cut these up. And what you want to do is you want to cut them up into somewhat like cubes. So the next step is we're going to put them in a pan with a little olive oil and then we're going to sear the beef separately and the chicken separately and then we'll move on to the next step. Next we're going to get our pan heated up a little bit. We're going to put a little squirt of oil in there. Okay, so once that oil starts to get a little, a little steamy, I'm going to throw my meat in there. Like I said, we're going to sear this meat on all sides and we're gonna do it for the beef and the chicken so i'm gonna add a little salt and pepper to this as well while it's searing all of the sides Okay, this is after about five or 10 minutes. You can see that they're starting to become a little bit seared, but I'm gonna get nice little crispy edges on this meat. I'm gonna do the same for the chicken. The goal here is not necessarily to cook the meat all the way through, but just to get the kind of these little seared edges here. That'll make them nice and tasty. Okay, these are looking pretty nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the meat out and I'm gonna put a little bit more oil in the pan. And then I'm gonna sear the chicken. Now I'm not gonna take out all these little crunchy bits in here because that's gonna add to the, the uh, flavor later on. Okay, now to the chicken, a little bit more oil in there. And then just add your chicken. We're gonna do the same thing to the chicken that we did to the meat. Just sear it to make it nice and crispy on those edges. So these are looking pretty nice. You can see that they've got some nice color and they picked up a little searing around the edges. So I'm gonna take these out and then I'm gonna put them in a bowl and just set it aside and we'll move on to the next step. So I turned down the heat, but what I'm gonna do now is put in my diced yellow onion and then we're gonna cook these kind of on a low lower heat and we're gonna cook them until they become somewhat translucent and then we're gonna add some garlic until it becomes fragrant, but you don't wanna burn your garlic. So just be careful with that. Oh, and give it some more oil. Okay, these are looking pretty nice. They've kind of become a little bit more translucent. So next I'm gonna add six cloves of garlic. And again, don't burn these puppies, they'll burn really fast. So make sure you mix it around. And you're gonna just cook this until it becomes nice and fragrant. Okay. Something goes. This one goes. 
this here. All right, for simplicity, I'm going to put the chicken and beef in this pan. Normally, you just put the beef in there and use all the little niblets in there, but since I'm splitting it, I'm gonna put chicken and beef in there. I don't think it'll make that big of a difference. But I'm gonna put in three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and I'm just gonna lightly simmer this, okay, to get some of these little niblets off the edges. And then we're gonna put the meat in the pan, and then we're gonna to toss it. And then we'll move on to the next step. But just give this a minute and try to get all these little niblets off the edges. This is all good stuff, flavor, that you wanna to add to your birria, okay? Super delicious. All right, add your beef, add your chicken, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and toss this a few times just to get some of that apple cider vinegar coating the chicken and the beef, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and separate this. And I'm gonna put the chicken into one Instapot and the beef into another Instapot. And then I'm gonna show you how to make the sauce or the broth or the soup, I guess, because it's birria, a type of soup with the chilies that we cut up earlier. I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna prepare our chilies and really these are optional. You can use any dried chilies that you want to, but I really like to use these. So I'm using three guajillo chilies two dried pasilla chilies, and then a, one California chili, and two New Mexico chilies, they're also called hatch chilies. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off the stems, and then we're gonna break them open and remove all the seeds, and then we'll go on to the next step. So that's not too difficult. It does make a bit of a mess, but the combination of these chilies really deeply flavor your birria and your street tacos. So again, all of these are optional. Any one of them are optional. You can typically find these at your local uh, Hispanic type food store or supermarket. So the next thing you're gonna do is warm up your beef broth. And this is two cups of beef broth. And we're gonna use this to put in a blender, but before we blend up everything that goes in the blender, we're gonna let our chilies sort of steep and soften for about 15 minutes, I'm told. 15 minutes in a blender. I'll show you how to do that here in just a second after we get our beef broth boiling. We got our beef broth rolling here. So we're gonna turn off the heat, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a blender, and then I'm gonna put my chilies in there, put the lid on, and then we're gonna let it soften for 15 minutes. Alrighty, pour in your beef broth. Not making a big mess. And then we'll put our chilies in there, our nice chilies that we kind of cut up earlier. Pull the seeds out and make your chilies all submerged to make them nice. Get them in a nice, nice beef broth bath. Okay, so after 15 minutes, we let these soften. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add some fire roasted diced tomatoes. This is a 14 and a half ounce can, as you can see. Okay, pop off the lid. Put this into your mixture. Mm. Mm, they smell nice. And then you're gonna put two adobo chili peppers, and I'll put a link in the recipe below where you can find these, but they're adobos. What are they called, chipotle and adobo? Oh yeah, they're chipotle and adobos, okay? Dobo chilies. And then we're gonna put in some oregano, some cumin, coriander. Okay, you're gonna put that in your mixture and then I'm just gonna hit it with a little salt and pepper. Okay, mm, delicious. And then we're gonna put our lid on and then we're gonna blend this puppy up. Blend it. Okay, we blended it up super nicely. Now we're gonna taste it, put a little finger in there. Ooh, it looks beautiful. Look how delicious it looks. Like the color is amazing. It smells wonderful. Mm. It's an amazing flavor. A little spicy, but not too bad. And then what we're going to do, since I'm doing meat and chicken, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually uh, measure the amount of fluid I have in there, amount of the, the sauce, and I'm going to split it up between the two 
uh, meats, the chicken and the beef. Okay, so this measured out to be about four cups. So I'm gonna put two cups in the chicken and then I'll put two cups in the beef. So after I pour that in there, I'm just gonna give it a nice mix to get those onions and the garlic and the rest of our business all, all mixed up there. You can see that looks really pretty dang amazing. Okay, check that out. So I'll do the same thing for the beef. And then we're gonna put the lids on the puppies. Okay, and we're gonna set it to seal. And then we're gonna come down and we're gonna pick the meat stew option. And we're gonna set it for 50 minutes, which you can't really see there, but it's 50 minutes. We're just gonna let it do its thing. And then once it's done, we're gonna unseal it. We're gonna flip it so it depressurizes. And then we're gonna do the same thing for Mr. Beef. We're gonna put on our lid. We're gonna make sure it's sealed, okay? And then we're gonna pick the meat stew, and then we're gonna increase the time. Okay, and then we set it to 50 minutes and we're gonna let it do its thing. A few moments later. Okay, so I'm gonna take my beef, birria, and pour it into the pot. Okay, and then we're gonna put the chicken in the other one. And then I put these on, I set them on low, and I'm just gonna cover these and let them sit for a few more hours and let them soften up a little bit and develop its flavor. Okay, our tacos are done. We're gonna build some tacos now. I'm gonna make this little baby taco. This one's the meat, looks wonderful. Okay, and then we're gonna come over here. And we're gonna do some chick chick, chicken, chicken birria, okay. Little chicken niblets. Good, good, good. Okay, continue. And then we're gonna put some onions on this puppy. A few sprinkly onions, very nice. Okay, put on the little, little quesos, also known as cheese. All right, in case you didn't know. And then we're gonna put on a little bit of pico, just a little smidge of pico, a little bit of guac. Okay, a little bit of guacamole. Okay, and then we're gonna put on a little bit of homemade salsa. Check those puppies out. Oh, looking nice. Let's eat them. Okay, we're gonna eat our tacos. Let's check out, this is the beef taco. That looks super nice. Just looks like a street taco from Mexico. Okay, let's eat it. Mm. Mm. It's so good. Mm, it's delicious. Two tacos. Let's try our chicken. Let's see how Mr. Polio tastes. Mm, that's nothing. Mm, it's really good. Make them, you like them. Okay, here's a close up of Mr. Taco. It looks delicious. My plate is a mess because I've been slurping this stuff up. So good. So tasty. Make them. I think you'll love them. Has a nice smoky, herbal, Mexican-y flavor. Mi espanol es muy malo. The Spanish term varilla, birria, but we're not using goats because we don't want to upset the goat ancestors, right? <laughs> okay, after 15 minutes, we let these soften. Soften. I keep using the word soften. Soften. It's spelled soften. But it's soften. Okay, so. After blending, take a look at <laughs> Chili's need a bath. Need a bath in the beef broth. <laughs>